اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیلو پینلس اینڈ ویورس السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ فسٹ آف آل آئی ہوپ دیٹ یور رمدان از گوئنگ ویل اینڈ ڈسپائٹ دیز ویری ویری ڈیفیکلٹ سرکمسٹینسز ان وچ موسٹ پیپل اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ آر انڈر لاک ڈاؤن بیکاز آف دس پینڈیمک We hope that you are all keeping safe and that everything goes uh, well with you. Every year, um, Al-Quds Day seminars are held around the world, or Al-Quds Day rallies, in, by the way, are held around the world. But because of this pandemic, uh, this year it is not possible. And instead, there are webinars being held everywhere, including this one. Now, I'm going to talk about the, the, uh, Donald Trump's so-called deal of the century that was unveiled on uh, January 28th, uh, 2020. This 181-page document uh, prepared by his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, uh, he claimed on CNN uh, that this had been in the making for three years and he had, uh, he had consulted everybody Uh, the only people, of course, that he did not consult were the Palestinian people uh, whose lives are greatly affected by this so-called deal. And what is in this deal, I think it's important for us to look at and also see what its political implications would be. First of all, the deal legitimizes the illegal Zionist settlements throughout the Israeli-occupied West Bank. There are more than 600,000 settlers uh, on the West Bank, and they, of course, would continue to uh, remain there, and these settlements we would be uh, part of Israel. So today, although they are in de facto occupation of that land, if the Palestinians were to accept it, that would become de jure. So therefore, Legitimacy would be conferred upon illegal Zionist settlements on the Palestinians' lands. Secondly, the, this particular plan calls for Israel to annex uh, large parts of the West Bank, including the Jordan Valley and uh, areas north of the Dead Sea, including the whole of Jerusalem. and. Uh, East Jerusalem that comprises a large Palestinian population as well as uh, Masjid al-Aqsa as well as the Dome of the Rock and of course the uh, Haram al-Sharif, the Holy Sanctuary or the Noble Sanctuary would be under complete uh, Zionist control. And the Palestinians are being told that they can set up their capital and they can call it Jerusalem as a concession to them, so-called concession, Uh, in areas of Abu Dis and other areas. So in other words, the Palestinians would have absolutely no control over Jerusalem and the Palestinians that are residing in Jerusalem would be ethnically cleansed and removed from there and pushed into the enclaves uh, that are being offered uh, to the Palestinian people. Now this on enclaves, these patchworks that are being offered to the Palestinians are really a very strange um, composition. Uh, they, are, they are patchworks, and they're not even directly linked with each other. So these patchworks would be linked with each other either through underground tunnels or bridges or roads. And of course, these roads can be cut off by the Israeli army at any time. This particular Palestinian enclave uh, will have no military, no security forces, no heavy weapons and they would have no control over their um, airwaves, their communications. They wouldn't have any borders with any country. They'll be completely surrounded by Israel on all sides, just like the Gaza Strip is today. And uh, therefore, this entity, what, what, I don't know, what, whatever, it, it's going to be a new entity under international law. And the Palestinian so-called authority, the only powers that, that it would have would be to have a flag and perhaps uh, uh, control over municipal affairs, 
to be able to collect garbage, etc. But other than that, it would have absolutely no rights or no authority. Now, this entity is also called upon not to enter into any agreements, political, diplomatic, military, uh, legal, social, with any other state outside, uh, uh, outside their borders without the permission of Israel. So in other words, Israel will determine everything that this particular uh, entity is able to do or is unable to do. One other factor that uh, the Palestinian refugees whose right of return is enshrined in United Nations Resolution 194, uh, the Palestinian refugees would be called upon to repudiate their right of return. Uh, we need to remind ourselves that Resolution 194 also was, uh, con uh, this resolution also contained this uh, condition of uh, Israeli membership of the United Nations uh, contingent upon accepting the right of return. So in all these 72 years, Israel is actually in violation of Resolution 194, and therefore it is an illegal member. Its credentials are illegal because it has not allowed the Palestinian people to return to their, the Palestinian refugees to return to their lands. So in other words, this entity that is being created is going to be a strange entity, and the Palestinians are being called upon to commit political, economic, and social suicide. Naturally, they are not prepared to do that. Naturally, they will resist this and they will struggle for their rights to achieve proper sovereignty, proper equality under the law. And until that time, they will continue to struggle. So this deal of the century is nothing but a, an instrument of surrender for the Palestinians to commit political, economic, and social suicide. We hope, inshallah, that we can continue to concentrate on these aspects and draw attention to the suffering of the Palestinian people. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.